Russia's Admiral Kuznetsov is one of the world's largest conventionally powered aircraft carriers. An aircraft carrier that was never meant to be. It has a backstory that Hollywood could only imagine. However, this is all real, and we'll see why it is arguably the most controversial aircraft carrier ever to grace Russian waters. Let's get to it! Russia's journey to wielding an aircraft carrier began at a time when the Soviet Union completely dominated in land and air battles. But not water. Never water. A weakness they tirelessly tried to change. Their first attempt at an aircraft carrier, Ismail, was expected to displace 35,000 tons, which was huge at the time, but it ended up displacing zero as the ship was never completed. Had it been, though, it would have been one of the largest at the time, almost matching ton for ton with the United States' top carrier class at the time, the Lexington class. The Soviet Navy, having lost out on a chance to be a leading aircraft carrier force, made several attempts afterward, with Project 71 for 13,000 ton carriers, Project 72 for 30,000 ton carriers, Project Kostraminitov for 40,000 ton carriers, and Project 85 for a light carrier, all of which turned out to be embarrassing disappointments. This series of back-to-back -back failures made it quite clear that the Soviet Union simply could not afford to build an army, air force, and navy simultaneously, and have been forced to prioritize the army and air force over the navy multiple times. But with the US having worked wonders with their aircraft carriers during World War II, the Soviets were beginning to get more and more intrigued by the importance of a floating airbase. Aircraft carriers Moskva and Leningrad were the first two carriers born out of this new optimism. At the Nikolaev shipyards in Ukraine in 1962. Then next were four Kiev-class aircraft carriers to follow suit. However, it was in the mid-70s and 80s that the Soviets finally decided to unleash the big guns, quite literally. They began the development of three huge aircraft carriers that were sure to shock the world. Of the three were two 50,000 plus ton conventionally powered aircraft carriers and one nuclear powered supercarrier known as Ulyanovsk. Supercarrier Olyanovsk would actually end up being scrapped by Ukraine after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, while one of the conventionally powered carriers would be sold to China, where it still serves to this day as the Liaoning aircraft carrier for the Chinese Navy. And so of the three indomitable carriers developed by the Soviet Navy, only one was ever completed, one that was later inherited by Russia one that ended up having four different names, depending on what decade you're looking at. Riga, Leonid Bresnev, Bilsi, and Admiral Kuznetsov. The Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier is a thousand foot long ship with a displacement of 58,000 tons that can carry up to 30 to 40 aircraft at a time. It is armed to the teeth with armaments specifically designed to disintegrate even the largest carriers of the American fleet, which are currently the General Ford class supercarriers that displace an impossible 100,000 tons, roughly 55% more than the Admiral Kuznetsov. However, with the right amount of firepower on board, size could just be a number, and apparently, that's what the Admiral is out to prove. For this reason, the carrier doubles as a heavy aircraft carrying missile cruiser that could deal an unimaginable level of damage against oppositions, even without having any of its 40 fighters or bombers in action. This self-sustainability is thanks to no less than 24 rotary-style vertical launch systems with 8 missile cells each that can fire in rapid successions the 192 SAN-9 gauntless point air defense missiles that the aircraft carrier has on board. The Admiral Kuznetsov is further fitted with multiple AK-630 cannons and Cash-10 missile close-in weapon systems that combine to detect and destroy short-range incoming missiles and enemy aircraft that have somehow managed to penetrate the outer defenses. But all of these only serve as opening acts for the real offensive punch 
of the Admiral Kuznetsov. Twelve massive P-700 supersonic anti-ship missiles nicknamed Shipwreck because that's really what they do. At 15,500 pounds, each of these missiles weighs the same as a combat-figured F-5E Tiger II jet and can fly at more than twice the speed of sound to deal earthquaking destruction with a 1,600-pound fuel-air conventional or nuclear warhead. Irrespective of the warhead choice, though, one thing is certain. Any target of the P-700 missile is on the verge of being blown to smithereens. So with these armaments directly at the disposal of the Admiral Kuznetsov, in addition to a pair of UDAV-1 anti-submarine and anti-torpedo rocket systems, Russia's floating airbase is far more than just an aircraft carrier. But sadly for it, so is the USS Gerald Ford supercarrier. The USS Gerald Ford is an 1,100 feet long, 256 feet wide monster machine that towers a staggering 250 feet from the sea, making it the largest aircraft carrier to ever be made. And this humongous size isn't proportional to slower speeds in any way. With four propulsion shafts and two Bechtel A1B power nuclear reactors supplying power, the supercarrier has an impressive 30 knots top speed as it goes around the world over and over showing its ability to cut through the waters for a lifespan of 50 years, while only ever needing to refuel once. The supercarrier can carry up to 75 aircraft at a time, almost double that of Russian contenders. The aircraft on the supercarrier can launch aircraft with full payloads and even buddy stores due to having catapults that could launch them to the skies, even when fattened with all the possible add-ons. The same cannot be said of the Admiral Kuznetsov as the carrier lacks any catapults, and its only launch aid to its aircraft is an extra-large ramp to set them up for ski jumps. With this in mind, the Americans can send multiple complete strike fighters and electronic attack squadrons. Fully loaded with combat radius and accompanied with full airborne early warning support and organic tanking support. Basically, they would have the same capabilities and support that the Air Force would have from a ground base. And the attacking aircraft that have launched from the USS Gerald Ford can hit the Kuznetsov from outside the range of the Admiral's P-700 and surface-to-air missiles. And therefore, powerful as they are, they become pointless. And thanks to the buddy tanks, the American aircraft will also have a lot more range than the Russian Su-33s and MiG-29 fighters aboard Admiral Kuznetsov, reducing them to mere spectators. And at this point, Admiral Kuznetsov is left with the only option of aiming its air wing on intercepting AAW projectiles, which would also prove difficult as every fighter aircraft from the USS Gerald Ford would be an AAW capable, and there's only so much the Russians can intercept. But from here on out, it would be a barrage of fury from the Americans, attacking with brute force and electronic warfare, possibly disabling the fire control or missile guidance of the Kuznetsov. From jamming and decoying to AARGM anti-radiation missiles, it would be a story of no mercy of the most lethal navy in the world taking aim at an aircraft carrier that either no longer has any more armaments to fire or has been disabled from being able to fire them. And the USS Gerald Ford doesn't simply base its attacking capabilities on its fighter aircraft alone. The ship, like the Admiral Kuznetsov, is packed with built-in heat of its own. This includes two RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, two RIM-116 Rolling Airframe missiles, three Phalanx CIWS guns, and four M2 50 caliber machine guns, all intelligently guided by next-generation processing systems for maximum precision. In terms of defense, this American supercarrier uses interceptor missiles, sensors, and a long line of other ship defenses to attack and destroy rocket-propelled enemy drones, aircraft, and surface threats, such as newer forms of integrated sensor networking, longer-range ship-based radar, artificial intelligence-enabled targeting techniques, and there have even been talks of laser-directed energy weapons. Clearly, a 1v1 fight between the Russian Admiral Kuznetsov and the USS Gerald Ford wouldn't be much of a fight at all. However, it is important to note that these two aircraft carriers are from two different generations, separated in timeline by decades. And that is an important factor to consider. 
The USS Gerald Ford was built in the 21st century, while the Admiral Kuznetsov dates back to the 20th century. And in that time gap, technology has advanced far beyond everyone's wildest dreams, a fact that the American supercarrier benefits from today. But Russia isn't going down without a fight. There have been talks of the development of a new aircraft carrier, a successor to the Admiral Kuznetsov that would display the might of the Russian Navy in bright colors. This $5.5 billion aircraft carrier would be known simply and quite chillingly as Storm. But at the moment, Russia has decided not to share any information on its new super-secret aircraft carrier until you subscribe to this channel. And we've tried to convince them, but you know how President Putin is. So how about you do us all a favor and storm the red subscribe button below, for Storm's sake. And remember to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. That'll be all for now. Thanks for watching.